Please join me with a salute to our flag. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Morrill? Here. Mr. Harrington? Here. Mr. Maryhill? Here. Mr. Gardner? Here. Mr. Douglas? Mr. Douglas, I'm here. Mr. Fairby? Here. Mr. Blades? Here. Mr. McNally is absent. Mr. Skazbaba? Here. Mr. Cannon? Here. Mr. Politi? Here. Mr. Moore has been excused. Mr. Marnell? Here. Mr. Whitson? Here. Mr. Grinnell? Here. Mr. Connell? Here. Mr. Gluland? Here. Mr. Here. Preston? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we do have one guest today, Sylvie Nelson. Sylvie, who is Executive Director for North Country Workforce Investment Board. Come on up. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you. Good. Thank you for having me. Um, I know it's been a little while. I now have a new function. I'm the executive director of the North Country Workforce Investment Board. And as such, I thought it'd be nice to come and introduce myself because I know in the past, Essex County has had um, some interaction with our organization, namely uh, with workforce development and uh, basically assigning some members of your business community to the North Country Workforce Investment Board. And I don't know if you're familiar, but there's uh, quite a bit of changes that are coming thanks to the, um, the new, I have to remember it, um, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, will, which will be replacing the Workforce Investment Act. Um, most of it locally in New York State, we're very well poised to kind of ease into this new uh, law, which has come um, into effect as of July of last year, but is actually really being implemented July 1st, 2015. So as such, we're kind of getting ourselves ready to kind of move into these new um, requirements, basically. And there's a couple of things that will happen. First, uh, our name's going to change. It won't be the WIB anymore. It'll be the uh, North Country Workforce Development Board instead of um, Investment Board. So that's um, going to be, hopefully, we're planning on transitioning as of July 1st. So that's going to happen, but as such, we have to dissolve the board that we already have, and we have to reappoint a new board. And so if we are in the process of evaluating, um, <clears throat> you know, who basically will be staying, and we feel that most of our representatives will be staying. Um, like I said, we're pretty much on track with that, but there might be a couple of changes. So I wanted to let you know that, because you're going to have to totally reassign all the business representation from Essex County. Um, the other thing too, I have a document that we have to get you to agree. I won't ask you to sign it yet without reviewing it, but basically is to agree to continue assigning uh, the businesses to our board. And then once we have the list, we will submit it to the uh, regional, of, uh, sust uh, regional Office of Sustainable um, Tourism, which is Jim McKenna's, and he will be presenting the list of businesses to represent Essex County on our board. So those are the changes that are imminent, and I don't know if you have any questions or anything like that. Sylvie, so we'll need to... Uh have our county attorney review that yep. before we can move on it. I have a copy of the agreement as well as the, the technical advisory from the state of New York that's included with that. Okay. So, I, I mean, I didn't expect you to sign it without uh, <laughs> reviewing it, but it's in here. And basically, if you can get that back to us, that would be great. Okay. You'll leave that one with me? Yeah. Good. Okay. Any questions for Sophie? 
Randy? Just want to say, Sylvie, thank you for coming and welcome to your new position, the executive director. I know it's been a few months now, but uh, I, I know how uh, very proactive Sylvie is. I know her very personally, and I and I appreciate everything you're trying to do to make Essex County a better place. Thank you. Thank you, and we're working very much in partnerships with the county, and I'm sure I'll be back in these new functions. And if you need anything from our end, of course, feel free to reach out to me specifically. I'll be more than happy to help out. So. Anyone else? Anything else for Sylvie? If not, congratulations on your new Thank you. So, uh, Thanks we'll for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Resolution. Yeah. Resolutions recommended by the Human Services Committee. Authorizing the appointment of George King of Westport as a member of the Essex County Community Services Board and as a member of the CSB Mental Health Mental Health Subcommittee for terms effective January 1st, 2015 to December 31st, 2018. Moved by Mr. Connell. Second. Moved by Mr. Morrow, Mr. Gardner. Comments or questions? If not, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution authorizing the appointment of Clifford Johnson of Port Henry as a member of the Essex County Community Services Board and as a member of the CSB Mental Health Subcommittee for terms effective January 1st, 2014 to January 31st, 2017. Moved by Mr. Scott Second. Mr. Cornell. Comments or questions? If none, all in favor aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Authorizing the appointment of Senator Hazelwood, MD, as a Director of Community Services Designee Physician in accordance with the New York State Mental Health Mental hygiene law. Moved by Mr. Blades. So second. Second by Mr. Marnell and Mr. Cannon. Comments or questions? Not all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Authorizing a budget amendment in the mental health department to increase revenues and appropriations in the amount of $42,000. $500 to allow collection of electronic health record incentive payments and authorize the submittal of an RFP to purchase a new electronic health record and practice management software. Moved by Mr. Mary Hughes, second by Mr. Harrington. Comments or questions? <laughs> All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Proclaiming the month of May 2015 as Older Americans Month. Moved by Mr. Connell. Authorizing the surplus of two vehicles in the transportation department. Moved by Mr. Scazafala, second by Mr. Marnell. Comments or questions? Done. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Accepting and placing on file the 2014 Transportation Department Annual Report. Moved by Mr. Marnell. Second. Second. Mr. Connell. Comments or questions? None. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Accepting and placing on file the 2014 Public Health Annual Report. Moved by Mr. Blades. Second. Mr. Mary here. Comments or questions? None. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolutions recommended by the Public Safety Committee authorizing the Emergency Services Department to proceed with the installation of two drop-in sites and one transmitter at a cost not to exceed 26000 with funds to come from the radio project. Moved by Mr. Preston. Second. Mr. Morrow. Comments or questions? I have a question. Okay. Uh, I just have a question about this. It says to proceed with the installation. Do we need a contract for this? Is that what this is? The existing ones that are doing the installations now, if I'm not mistaken. So we need a contract amendment? Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay. Right. So we'll just, I'll amend that for regular board. Sounds good. Any other comments or questions? Not all in favor, aye. 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 Carried. There were no resolutions from the Economic Development Committee. Um, resolutions recommended by DBW Committee. Authorizing the Ragnar events to rent the Essex County Fairgrounds and the Essex County Government Center parking lot as staging areas for the Ragnar Relay on September 25th and 26, 2015. And further authorizing to utilize county roads, Alexandra Avenue and Ticonderoga, Stowersville Road and Lewis, and the River Road North Elba. This is just going to also have an amendment for providing they submit the proper permit and insurance. And, and just can we put in there the stipulation, make sure they clean up after the after the race. Thank you. Any further comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Of congratulations to, es to the Essex County Soil and Water Conservation District on celebrating 50 years of service in Essex County. Mr. 
Second. 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 Authorizing Essex County Soil and Water District to accept a grant in the amount of $4,800 for planting of 4,800 trees at the county reforestation land location in Keene. Second, Mr. Mayor, Hugh, Mr. Hornell. Comments or questions? All in favor, aye. 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 All those, carried. Authorizing the Greater Adirondack Resource Conservation Development Council as the contract agent to apply for the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service funding for a forest management plan. Moved by Mr. Morrill. Second. Mr. Marnell. Comments or questions? None. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. There were no resolutions from the Personnel Committee. Finance Reduction Mandate Relief Committee authorizing the creation of two student training temporary positions in the county clerk's office. Called me about. Moved by Mr. Cannon. Right. So second. Mr. Connor. Comments or questions? Just under discussion. Uh, Joe carried over that money from 2014 into a reserve account so they didn't have it for this summer. Is there an amount of time that people out there? Yeah, I think there was. Boy, I, I don't have the number in front of me, but there was a, there was an exact right. amount. Okay. I think it was fourteen thousand. Right. Okay. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. <laughs> Authorizing the county manager to seek a letter of authorization from the current county contracted engineering firm to provide the county with preliminary design documents suitable for the purposes of grant submission as it relates to the design and construction of a building to replace the existing nutrition building. Move by Mr. Morrill. Uh, yeah, because it, th that was, I didn't realize that contract was still in place, but it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is for AES. Yeah, that would be with AES. AES, this contract is still in place. Um, just as uh, information on this, um, they're actually going to um, provide as pro bono the, um, okay. the paperwork necessary for the grant submission. And then after that, if we get the grant, Proceed further, then they would give me a, a price for the design. But on a, on, for, the, for the initial design, um, they're going to just give us um, the, that design a pro bono. Pro bono, no money then? Yeah. Okay. Any further comment or question, Mr. Glillon? Well, as I, last year we discussed the building, something better is mentioned about CC and soil water into it. The press only puts soil water into it. Yeah, it is. Um, what we looked at was both Cornell Cooperative Extension and Soil and Water. Um, I have contacted um, Cornell and said, okay, you know, you need to give me a layout of what you what you anticipate as being your needs. So they are providing that to us. And I know Dave has been in contact with um, a number of people to get ready. Yeah. Cornell. Uh, are we doing a comparative study of, of simply renovating the building that we have compared New building. Yeah, you, you and I talked about that, and I, I don't think that's a bad idea. I think we probably could do that. Um, the only thing, the, of course, the renovation wouldn't provide room for the other those exactly. other departments. But yes, we probably will look at that at the same time. Yeah. Any further comments or questions? No. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Under miscellaneous, adopting the citizen participation plan to meet the citizen participation participation requirements of Section 508 of the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended in the program policies of the New York State Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Program. Moved by Mr. Douglas. A second. Mr. Mary Hugh. Comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Adopting the following procedures and policies for Essex County for the procurement of goods and services necessary for the Im implementation of projects funded by the Governor's Office of Storm Recovery of the New York State Housing Trust Fund Corporation. Moved by Mr. Morrill, second by Mr. Gardner on that one. Funding. Uh, Comments or questions? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution accepting the mortgage tax report. Moved by Mr. Scott second by Mr. Grinnell. Comments or questions? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? From the floor. Um, we have two from the floor. Um, the first one is resolution authorizing the county chairman or county manager to sign a sub award between the Nature Conservation. Conserva Conserva 
Conservancy in the County of Essex relative to the receipt by Essex County of $300,000 in National Fish and Wildlife Foundation funds for the installation of precast culvert structures, wing walls at River Road in North Elba, crossing Boring Brook and Holcombrook. Moved by Mr. Politi. Uh, just a, a word of explanation. Um, we have two culverts. Uh, Essex County is responsible for the replacement of two culverts over Roaring Brook and Holcomb Brook. Um, <clears throat> the Nature Conservancy has received a grant, and uh, they're willing to contribute $300,000 toward our work on these two culvert replacements. Uh, we will be responsible for $150,000 in matching funds um, and expenses. Uh, however, without the $300,000 grant, we'd have, we would have ultimately be responsible for the whole thing anyway. So this is a, a benefit to us in that we'll be getting $300,000 out of a $450,000 project. And we need to enter into an agreement for that. Any other comments or questions? Not all in favor, aye. Oh, so aye. Aye. I, I was going to say, I hope this is imminent. It, it should be. Uh, everything. Um, it took a while yeah. uh, because it took, uh, to get uh, an agreement back from uh, Nature Conservancy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm just, for obviously reason, obvious reasons, I'm concerned about Iron Man. Yeah, well, I've spoken to Shauna, somebody, okay. who, and uh, we're all set with a contract. All right. Good. But what, I realized we didn't have a resolution, so that's why right. I did. Thank you. Yep, it's a minute. Any other questions? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. The next resolution on your desks is a resolution approving no. of... Judy. No? No, the one on the sheriff. Yeah. We're that's... not going to... Oh, we're not doing that one? Okay. That's all I have then. Okay. Anything further to come before this committee? I do. I do too. <laughs> I just have a couple of things. Um, we, I do. Charlie Arrington and Mike and myself and a few others that were on the uh, Green Committee um, kind of finished the um, review of the RFPs for the energy savings. Um, Linda completed a report on Friday. I'm going to get that stuff out to you guys this week. And we do have a recommendation for our contractor um, at that point, um, which we will provide written documentation to you as to why. And then you can either decide to move at the regular or you can put it off another month. But that's um, something that will be coming this week. The other one that we've narrowed down to is the solar RFPs that were out there. Um, I think we're ready to make a recommendation on those as well, and I'll get you a written report on those this week as well so that we can decide if we want to move forward with that as, as a project. Um, to. Um, the way that the solar one is currently set up is we still can um, use it to offset credits to um, our overall billing. Um, so it's still a viable option at this point, um, given that um, we are still allowed up to this point to um, offset um, our total bill. If you, if it starts to get back to um, where you're not allowed to offset your total bill, in other words, you're not allowed to feed back to the grid, then it may be questionable whether you want to proceed. But um, if we are allowed to feed to the grid, then it's a, probably a viable project on the solar side. <clears throat> the energy one makes sense regardless. Um, your next commitment would only be for 20-some thousand, and essentially that's going to give you a overall plan as to what you need to do countywide to um, produce some real um, savings in terms of lighting and heating and boilers and windows and those kinds of things that would that would make sense um, as, a, as an overall project um, which would um, ultimately reduce our yearly expenditures within buildings and grounds for repairs on a band-aid basis and we would start to move forward with some some savings that could be produced um, by upgrading some of these um, critical things that we have including boilers and those kinds of things air conditioning that so so that the, the, I think the energy one um, really makes the most sense to proceed with um, because of the, um, the amount of work that we have to be done around here that I think we could produce enough savings to cover that cost. Didn't we do an energy study a couple of years We did a preliminary one that really just looked at um, the second. The, what happens is 
we did the preliminary one, kind of gave us an idea of what we needed, and then we did the RFPs and we received a number of responses. We narrowed that to three. Um, we've really reviewed those three and we really think we have a recommendation for uh, moving forward. Um, then they come in and do a real detail. They, they come right back in and tell you every light fixture and every boiler and everything that needs to be changed or, or upgraded, and then can give you a total cost of project based upon that. Any questions for Dan? No questions? Done for Dan? Dan? Um, I'm going to ask uh, if we could grant courtesy of the floor to Don Jaquish. Uh, just have a, he may be able to answer a few questions about a contract that we need to have a resolution for. No. No. Okay. Uh, no. Dan? Or Don? Too many Dan's and Don's today. Uh, basically, what we're looking for is a resolution authorizing the execution of the, uh, a contract with priority dispatch in the amount of $51,322. Um, and uh, I'm sure uh, Don will expound on this. It's for emergency medical dispatch software, which aids our, di our dispatchers in uh, uh, properly giving uh, advice and information on emergency medical dispatch. Um, and with that, I'll let Don take it away. Yeah, presently uh, we're using what's called a flip card system. We do EMD, which is emergency medical dispatch. Uh, it's a card system where the dispatcher has to flip through the cards. We got a grant, so it's 100% funded uh, by an uh, interoperability grant. Uh, and this is going to, instead of doing the flip card, we're going to be going uh, into our new CAD system. We're going to integrate it uh, simultaneously with a new upgrade that we're ta that's taking place in the dispatch center. It, uh, for one thing, will uh, eliminate a lot of mistakes that can be made when you're doing the EMD. Uh, the EMD gives basically preliminary uh, advice to people who call with medical issues. Uh, the dispatcher goes through a flip card system presently and then advises them as to, for instance, how to do CPR, obstructed airways, heart attacks, that type of thing. So in, in two ways, this is much better because it, it actually will eliminate uh, mistakes and eliminate some of the liabilities with doing EMD dispatch. Virtually all your uh, up-to-date modern dispatch centers are all doing EMD dispatching. And this particular one priority, one dispatch, is uh, been approved by uh, the Department of Homeland Security as a sole source purchase. So, so that was the question that Dan had. We checked with this as they looked at the contract and said, "Yeah, that's fine." Dan, this is or Don, this is total cost. There's not going to be anything. No, this is all funded by the interoperability grant. Any questions for Donald? You have the resolution, Dan. Uh, well, I, I need a resolution authorizing the execution of the contract and the. Principal amount of fifty-one thousand three hundred and whatever it was, twenty-two dollars as a sole source contract. Good. Move by Mr. Gazafala. I have a second, Mr. Mayor. Comments or questions? None. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Actually, I'm going to hold this off until regular board, and then I got. Uh, yeah. Taller American bump. That's right. It is. is it really? <laughs> uh, I don't know where we have a resolution in this respect, so I'm going to do it anyway. Um, we may, but. Uh, I'd like a resolution authorizing the county uh, chairman or the county manager to execute any and all documents as they relate to a New York State Homeland Security Emergency Services grant, FY 2015. The grant, awarded grant was $19,813. Uh, it's for emergency management performance. It's an emergency management performance grant. So just so I don't have to come back, uh, I'd like to uh, get a resolution authorizing the execution by either uh, county manager or county chairman of any and all documents required uh, for us to 
participate in the grant program uh, and to receive the monies. Uh, so I'd like to move that. Mr. Douglas, second by Mr. Galillo. Comments or questions? Uh, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. That's it with me. Yep. Anything else? Okay. Just a couple of things. Um, just want to know that I met with Don last week, and um, or maybe two weeks ago. We're working on a confidential distribution list to all of the board of supervisors, county manager, county attorney about contact information for uh, when emergency happens, Frontier, NYSEG, those situations, National Grid. So it's an updated version, but please, when you do get this from Don, please keep it confidential that you use and not the general public. It is something for you to have a general contact. But again, Don will give us an update on that as we go further along with this. But anytime you do have a disaster, please make sure that Don knows about it first. So it's right. So Don can't get the money flowing to us if he's not uh, if it doesn't get in the Emmy program, right, Don? And that's, so he's working on that for us now, and I just it will be coming forward. And the last thing I have, Bill, is just uh, the county was handed a resolution from the town of Essex this morning. It's uh, resolution 38-2015 uh, is being made in appreciation of the assistance given to the town of Essex during the trying times. And in particular, it goes on to mention uh, Joe Provence, Don Marquica, Mike Diskin, Dan Palmer, and Lenny Turbini, and, and myself. Uh, was motion was made by Councilperson Garvey and second by Councilman and Risley, and uh, they really do appreciate it. And, and I think hopefully things are getting better for you, but we do accept this on behalf of the county. Thank you very much. Anything else? Yeah, uh, recently in the press it's been announced that DEC and New York State are changing, want to change the, the rules in regards to the 480A property tax exemption. I would like to see Essex County lead the charge against this. It has got to be the most ill-conceived idea that I've ever heard of. It takes a too small pool of taxpayers that are subsidizing these 480 exemptions and shrinks it even further to the small property owner. And that's just asinine in my opinion. And I'd like to see this county lead the way. The only thing that's, the, the change is going to do is, is make a mess of Essex County particularly because we have more 488 property than any other county in the state and everyone I have talked to that's in the situation of owning a thousand acres or less has stated that being in the 488 exemption has been about the only way they could substantiate keeping the, the properties and if if that's going to be the case, if they're going back to full assessment, any stock that measures four inches DBH, four inches high at 50 inches off the ground, will be harvested. And, and the state is going to tell them they can't if they're telling them they no longer get the exemption to keep it for us. You're going to have a mess. It's just a, a terrible thought process by the state. And we need to we need to be we need to be the first ones to step up in opposition to it. Mr. Douglas. Uh, respectfully I ask that no action be taken on this right now because our real property director feels totally different uh, opinion wise. And second of all, um, we keep asking for uh, exemption reform. And this is a step in the right direction. I'm not saying this process, this is the, the way to go, but let's, let's not fool ourselves. We have people that are getting that exemption that aren't, aren't actually doing the forestry work on their property. So that I want to be tread very carefully on this because I, I know personally that in some in this county that are getting that exemption that uh, don't do the work. And I wait till the report comes from Charlie and an explanation before we take any action on this, please. I would I would respectfully submit that that if there are people that are not following the law in regards to the 488 exemption, that those names be put forth to DEC so that that part of the problem can be cleaned up. But the issue, as I see it, is not that that we have people in violation or whatever. The 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 problem is that the state mandates that the, the
the towns give an 80% tax reduction to anyone that has 40 or more acres that is reviewed by a forester, reviewed by the, by the DEC, and applied for through the 480A exemption. That 80% reduction in taxes that the state mandates is made up by the town that that parcel is in, not by the state. The towns make up that 80%. Now the state is going to take it so that the town doesn't have to do that anymore. That's wonderful. But they're going to put it on the back of the person that owns a thousand acres or less. You are going to be taxed full boat. You're going to you're going to wind up with tax sales of 400 parcels a year, and they're going to be stripped of timber because it's they're, they're you're going to harvest every stalk. Well, shake your head, Dave, but I'll tell you what, it's going to happen. Uh, Lewis has the second largest number of acres in the 480A, and I'll dispute you until I leave here Ooh. in December. Okay. Let's, let's have order for this, one at a time. We'll Who has that property? My question is, who has that property in the 488s? Is it small property owners, or is it Georgia Pacific, Wine, Timber, Finch, Prime? Because the big companies put their property in the 488s. They have thousands and thousands of acres. They are not going to be affected. And the other thing that the big companies do Bill, is I when they... Bill, I ask it to address the chair, please, not, not Mr. Blades. You know, address me. Certainly. And is the other thing that these large companies do is when they get their 488 exceptions, then they turn around and they lease that property back to sportsman groups, your constituents. They lease it at a fee that is greater than the 20% taxes that they pay. So they're making money on their leases, they're making money on their timber, and the little guy is going to get squeezed right out of the picture. I think, uh, as Chairman Douglas uh, recommended, we'll wait and see what the report comes out from uh, Real Property, and then we'll, we'll look at it then. Anything else? Mr. Douglas. Again, uh, Tom's right. Ms. Uh, Mrs. Lewis just sent out uh, an email on this. I ask you to review it, and then you know we'll discuss it as we go along. But I, I just don't think we should take any action to jump the gun at this point. I, I just remind everybody that um, anytime you grant an exemption, the rest of us are left behind to pay for it. And I'm not saying these aren't good exemptions. I'm not saying that the people that are doing it rightly so and legitimately so that the exemption shouldn't be there. But there are times and there are cases, believe it or not, that there are people out there that will do, file for an exemption um, and the rest of us end up paying, picking up the, the tag on it. So I just tread softly on this. That's all I'm asking. Don't, I wouldn't take any action. The debate is for another day. Good for Great. Anything else from Mr. Moore? I agree with Mr. Douglas, and I think in the future, if we do any resolution, it's the state that's forcing this on us. The state is the one that gives the exemption, and also it is the small taxpayers that are picking up the slack. In the future, maybe we ought to go after the state of New York and have them reimburse us for this exemption in the future. That should be our resolution. Agreed. Anything else to come before this committee? Not the standard.